What up, Solo? We're not only here back with some more League of Legends action playing at some of the crocodile up in the top lane. Got the chroma for the project of Renekton skin. Uh, doing a new build up and playing a lot lately. It's a Prowler's Claw build, but Death Stance, Maw follow up. Death Stance obviously against physical damage, Maw against AP, and then you get the opposite one. So for this game, it'll be Death Stance second. So Prowler's Claw, Death Stance, Maw. If they're like full AD or something. We can skip the Maw and go into our Black Cleaver, which is our fourth item. And get that a little earlier and then rune wise pta and then transcendence plus uh, gathering storm for some scaling action it's a pretty good split push build you have teleport so you can sit in side lanes and then join your team when you have to and it does a, a lot of damage especially single target damage prowl's call amps up your damage by 15 percent plus gives you that dash so 15 percent damage amp plus pta Let's you do quite a bit of work. All right, you started pushing, so I'm just gonna let it push to me and sit on my side of the map. Much safer from enemy jungle ganks. Just gotta be mindful of him hitting level up power spikes before me and trying to fight off of them. He hit level three right there, but I just back up. Don't offer him the fight. Back and teleport. End up flashing my uh, Q. There's not much else to do there. You can hold this wave though. Get a nice little freeze. Just really important right here. A freeze against an opponent who has to leave with Ignite. He's going to lose two waves. I just have to make sure I trim it here. Too many at the moment. Should be good. Just got to get this melee guy back here. Can even go like this. Drop him off in the bush. Nice. Yeah, kind of unlucky timing. I'm pressing Q right as he uh, does his flash away. Let's him live. And I don't want to flash after. Oh, right click the wrong one. So he missed an entire wave last wave, and now he's missing this entire wave. And then the thing is, even though, like, it's not where it ends. It's not like, oh, you missed two waves and it's done. Like, he missed two waves and then he comes back and the, and the lane is still frozen. Like, he has to come up and break the freeze. You can break this freeze by either one getting me to like shove the wave out, which I'm not gonna do, or two pushing the wave in himself underneath my tower to get it to break. I can trade right here though. He's just being too greedy trying to break the freeze. This is what happens. Get a little over zealous trying to break the freeze. Cause them to overextend and get into a bad position. You make the play off of it. Beautiful. So I'm going to even shove another wave here. Are these under tower? Alright, cool. Those ones aren't though. Lame. Oh, I thought that was gonna kill. Uh, I'm gonna pop potion because I'm afraid. Probably a waste, but whatever. Oh, never mind. I saw least in mid. I was more worried that jungle comes and I'm like not full HP. Jungle plus this guy, I'm gonna die to that for sure. All right, Prowl's Claw. Followed up with. Go two long swords there if you wanted, but I think one long sword plus a boot up or a boot plus uh, potions better. All right, a lot of damage. So yeah, like stat wise, when we have our build and you know our builds, Prowl's Claw, Death Stance, or Moth, and the other one. So Prowl's Claw, Death Stance, Moth, BC, Black Cleaver. 
And then after that, you kind of do whatever you want. Visage, Force of Nature, you know, GA, Thornmail, Randuins, honestly, whatever you want. Likely a damn or a tank option, but do whatever. Gargoyle Stone Plate would even be pretty decent as well. I'm really curious if I could have just killed him. Up that potion. Drop the minions off in the bush. Get that freeze going again. Be pretty good to get a ward behind me though. In that tri bush. Might go up there in a second. Nice chunk. I actually think I broke my freeze though. Kind of depends how this cannon goes. This cannon dies and these ones aren't focusing his cannon. It'll keep pushing. Yeah. Alright, we're good. Yeah, sometimes you get lucky AI stuff like that. Like that wave is literally even, so even wave pushes to the opposite side. But it kind of depends on what things you're targeting sometimes. Should be good here though. Let me just perma freeze on him. I have no incentive to push waves to his tower. A lot of lower elo players get into this trap where they think they have to like shove the whole time. It'd be the one up pressuring. But if you get ahead and you can freeze, that's way better than pushing. Because all of a sudden it's you're not you're not uh susceptible to your to the uh enemy jungle ganks. I mean I guess you're still susceptible. You could like ward dash over the wall, ult me out or something, or they could set up a dive, but you know, it's hard for them to pull that off. It's very easy for me to just maintain a freeze. I just last hit and keep a four minion advantage for his side. The wave will stay right outside my tower. I'll be sitting here with like full fury. So if he does try and come back, and this is what I mean, it just gets progressively worse. I'm getting golden EXP, he's missing some or both. And then I'm sitting here with full fury, you know, somewhat protected from the enemy jungler. I would say pretty protected from the enemy jungler. Because not even that the wave is like at my tower. It'd be one thing if it was under my tower. You know, they could dive on the wave. It's like right away from it. So I just walk under my tower and if they try and dive, they get hit by the tower immediately. It's not like they can get the minions to tank for them. Now the obvious downside is he could go roam and do something else on the map. He's currently not doing anything yet. He might be like hiding up in one of these bushes just getting EXP, which is not a bad idea. Oh, uh, I was going to say. See this one living? Big problem. Doing a ton of damage. I actually might break my freeze. Mm, depends. Please hit this one. No. Hit this one. There's nothing he can do. He walks up, tries to break the freeze, I kill him. If he doesn't walk up to try and break the freeze, the wave stays frozen. Pretty easy. Or if I mess up. Or if we get such an advantage that this... Yeah, once it gets to like 5%, it might break a freeze by itself. They mess with the breakpoints when it gets these buffs. These buffs happen when one team gets like a head over the other one. It's, it's a really terrible design by Riot Games, but nobody really noticed it, so I don't know. People didn't understand the change fully, so they didn't really complain about it enough. And then it happened, and then Riot probably doesn't even notice it anymore. I don't know, man. I've never fully understood why they did it. They, I think they did it so the it was a snowball thing. They wanted the losing sides to like have minions always pushing to them as like a comeback mechanic. Because when you freeze somebody out like this, they're completely fucked. Like he hasn't gotten farm in like five waves. <laughs> Remember back in the day when League wasn't like this and you just perma fought in top lane the whole time? Because I hate when people do this shit against me on my main. Like, it's so annoying. Bro, I would literally kill you. Thing is, I can literally just shove in, reset, bounce, get the wave to push back to me. I mean, I'm under no threat. You have two health. I kill you in one hit. Alright. So now I just hard shove. The funny thing is, the wave's actually going to bounce back and push to me because of what I'm doing here. So I get to go back, get my item, come back to lane, do another wave that I could essentially just freeze again. 
I'm not going to because it's 11 minutes and 30 seconds. Once you get to like the 10 minute area, freezes aren't really as valuable as getting plates, you know, because you're limited in the time that you can actually get those. 14 minutes are going to disappear. So I want to make that my objective for now. Shove waves and try and get plates. But yeah, just completely took them out of the game right there. And that's what I mean, like, the, what skill is that? You know what I mean? Like, I didn't outplay him or anything. I mean, I got ahead, and then I, when I'm ahead, I capitalize on it by freezing. I put him in a position that's not good at all. And if he wants to break it, he has to take some risk. And if he messes up, I can make my position even better. I'd like to slap tower a little bit here. I gotta be smart about it. Oh, nice. I actually might be able to kill him. Yeah, he uses W, so I just wait for it to end, and then I can Prowler's Claw kill him. Hmm. Mistake, sir. I'm PTA Renekton. I one-shot Squishies. I mean, I have empowered W, like, this alone is going to kill you. Like, it does 440 damage, and it applies PTA immediately by itself, so it's another 114, you know, 550 damage instantly, and you're stunned for 1.5 seconds. Good luck. So I was talking about where I said I start pressuring for tower plates. Might be able to get that one. Nice. Trying to bait him into using a shield. He was actually smart and held it. It didn't matter because we're pretty ahead here. Sweet. Hopefully we don't give any shutdowns away. <sighs> oh my god. It was almost not worth. He died for a thousand gold on Katarina. <laughs> Jesus. All right, I'm getting really, really ahead. Uh, Lee Sin's got gold, and then lucky for us, their support took the kills. It's pretty good. So here's Death Dance or uh, Maw upgrade. Depends what you need. Obviously, this game it's gonna be a Death Dance type of a game. I would go for the boot upgrade too, which would be Mercs probably. When I do this champ, or do this build rather, I am, if they have any amount of CC at all, I basically take Merc Treads because you don't have tenacity in your runes. And me personally, I take tenacity over like everything. Like normally when I play Crocodile, I have like unflinching and I have tenacity here. So like double tenacity rune. Because the annoying thing is, like, you want tenacity boots, like Merc Treads, but a lot of times you're against a ton of physical auto-attacking damage. So it's it's that awkward position where you need the Merc Tread effect, but, like, the magic resist isn't really a major thing for you. You really want the armor and the armor, or in the uh, auto-attack reduction effect. Ooh, that was a good ult. Works for me. Giant farm lead. Shove this wave in. Alright. Go over here, grab this. This. Once you start getting getting into a position like I'm in right now, where we're pretty far ahead of this guy, we just want to take full control of his entire jungle. Because then we're constricting uh, resources from their jungler as well. Putting him further and further behind. Taking away vision. Uh, I can one shot if I get Fury and if I pop his shield. I mean, ooh, I'm dead as fuck. Yeah. Rip. Oh, too much hesitation. I just had to pick somebody. I was going back and forth in my head on who I should kill. 
or go for. I didn't kill anybody, obviously. Who I should go for between these two? Like, I wanted to go for Lee, but then I saw Katarina, and I was like, ah, if I don't go for her, she's gonna one-shot me. But I have to wait for Lee to ult me, and then it's... It'd probably been easier just to run this way, instead of going right for Lee. The reason I go for Lee is because they're split up immediately. So if I wait for them to get to me, then I'm fighting Garen and Lee at the same time. Whereas if I pick a target and, you know, rush them, I'm fighting one person. Now, obviously, Garen's going to collapse. Garen's going to move from here to here, obviously. But, you know, I have that time. So it's like a second and a half where I get to fight one person as opposed to waiting for both of them to hit me. So the first time I get to fight them is when both are hitting, which is obviously much worse. Still wrong choice anyways. I think I could have saw Katarina off my ward too, so I should have known. Alright. So Ma's next. The Ma shield is actually really good with Renekton because it scales off of uh, your HP. So when we use our ultimate, which we you know obviously do in the beginning of fights. That was really bad. Like, giant shutdowns. I think they're coming for me. Just walk away here. That ping does nothing. You're 10 miles away, brother. Back into their jungle to yoink stuff. Ward right here. Um... I'm not going to use any other abilities. I want to sit here with, with uh, Full Fury in case they try and face check me or something. I think Katarina is actually moving into the jungle right now. Yeah, she is. I want to go for Katarina. You're the bait. Click. Ah, I hate when I do that, bro. You're backing and then you accidentally misclick. Oof, pain. So again, going for this now. I'm gonna get this first. You could get the hex tech or uh, the hex drinker first. That's fine too. I just kind of want the CDR. Does this have CDR? No, no, this does. Cool. So yeah, CDR wise, we're at 65. You know, we finish this, which will give us five additional ability haste, and then this over here will give us another 25. So once we get the Black Cleaver, we're sitting at 100 uh, Ability Haste, which is 50% CDR. Which is kind of ridiculous, because if you look, I mean, my E is on like a 6 second cooldown by the time I use it. You know? So, not too bad at all. And that's before we even get to the ridiculous levels of CDR. I mean, we're already at a pretty good level of CDR, but... It gets even better. Ooh. Ali's behind her. I gotta start kiting away. Works for me. Someone's deeping in. Works for me. I'm gonna go shift up. Mm, I'm down with that. Kill the jungle. Oh, okay. Works for me. Yeah, so after the mob, we just finished BC, and then after BC, like I said, you can... Client? Hello? Hello? This client, dude. <laughs> it's like hiding. I will not show. I will hide. Large damage. Yeah, like I said, the press the attack, snowballing early game is perfect. And this is, and again, amazing split push build, right? You know, we get ahead, we can force... It's like the perfect 1v1 build, essentially. You know, you have a ton of CDR, you have a ton of damage, all the utility is insanely good in 1v1 fights. This is going to reduce damage we're taking in 1v1s and delay it so we can heal it, you know? This is obviously going to help us get to our opponent 1v1 and increase our damage against that person. And then the Mythic passive is 
gets kind of ridiculous. Like once you start getting, you know, four or five items, it's it's weird because you feel. Let me show you. Uh, oops. Over here. Yeah, don't look at the game where I go zero and six. <laughs> but you know, like our late game is ridiculous with this build. We have insane damage right here. We're sitting with like four hundred and seventy. I remember this one. It was like four hundred and seventy attack damage. Uh, 100 ability haste, which is like 50% CDR. Then we also have all these effects. I mean, go through and you know look at them all yourself. But it's just a ridiculous build. You're so tanky. You have a ton of damage, and then again, you're really one v one potential. Your your one v one potential is actually ridiculous. And then you take uh, teleport, so you can split, join back with the team when you have to. But yeah, anyways, did you upload? Hope you guys enjoyed that one. Make sure to tune in next time, and I'll catch you guys then. Thanks for watching. Adios.